Hey, it's Kelly. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another video. This time I am going to do a circuit analysis of one of my favorite effects pedals. Um, I realize that it says Solo Sound Tone Bender Mark 1, but it actually is the uh, Fuzz Face. Now, I'm just using this schematic as an example because it was uh, a really nice large image. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is kind of run through it a little bit kind of highlight what's going on a little bit and then uh, most most importantly talk about some of my favorite modifications if you have a fuzz face kind of some things to look at um, and just so you know again the solo sound tone bender mark 1.5 is in all intents and purposes the same as a as a fuzz face just with some minor component distinctions and I'll make sure I highlight that as we go along so let's go ahead and just kind of look at it from a basic perspective and get an understanding of the, of the circuit. Um, we've got our input over here. The circuit is going to come in uh, from our quarter inch switch and probably also from our, our uh, foot switch. Uh, and then it's going to hit this first capacitor right here. I'm going to call this the input capacitor. This is a very important part of the circuit and it provides kind of the first stage of tone shaping. Um, we'll come back to this more later, but just remember that the, the input capacitor is a pretty important stage. Um, now we come to this point, which is going to be our, um, this is the base of Q1, which is our first transistor, and this is going to be the start of the first gain stage. Uh, we do have some resistance going down here, which is eventually going to ground. So this, is, this path from this 100K resistor is hitting the emitter of Q2 and then going through the amount of fuzz to ground, um, and that's going to kind of serve as our uh, kind of our gateway valve to, to determine how much gain is introduced into the circuit. Um, but the, the main part is going to come here, where we go in here, and then we go up to the collector, and uh, this is kind of our first gain stage, applying some, some signal increase and, uh, you know, overall just kind of starting the process of boosting. Um, notice how we go immediately into the base of Q2, which is our second transistor. Um, so again, we have two main gain stages here that are kind of, you know, going in to the first one of the base, out the collector, um, into the base of Q2, and then out this direction where we go through our a couple other components and through the output level pot. Um, and then finally we have our output circuit over here. We have another capacitor. This is kind of, I'm going to call it the output capacitor. And in many ways this is kind of a, a mirror of the input capacitor. So the second uh, kind of tone shaping place that we will look at. And then we have our output. Um, this is a potentiometer for the level control going out here uh, to the, the switch and then the, ultimately the output of the circuit. Um, and then the other thing to keep in mind is our power source right here. This is where our 9 volt power is coming in. We have some various resistors here, which is going to control the amount of voltage that is hitting the transistors. That is incredibly important, and you want to get the right amount of voltage in order to um, properly gain stage and, and just get the right sound out of the transistors. So it's a very simple circuit, and uh, there isn't a lot going on, but uh, they're really, because it is so simple, it kind of gives it that, that signature sound. Um, so let's go ahead and start talking about some of the places where we can start looking for modifications. Uh, the first thing, that, of course, we need to talk about are the two transistors themselves. The actual transistors that you use are probably the most important thing in determining the, the, the character of the distortion, the way that it cleans up, um, even some of the tonal you know, if it's a really hard-edged type of fuzz or more of a kind of a softer, looser type of fuzz, the, the specific transistor you use will be the most determining factor there. Now, um, you know, so, so experimenting with some different ones will be really useful. Now, the biggest thing to remember there is whether or not you're getting PNP or NPN. Uh, PNP is where you have a positive ground. So as you can see, um, you know, we have a negative 9 volts coming into the circuit up here. That's very much indicative of a PNP circuit. Um, so everything kind of needs to be backwards compared to a typical negative ground. Um, 
so NPN would be the negative ground. Now, um, the, the first mod that I want to talk about is going to highlight this guy right here. Uh, that 8.2K resistor is going to set the bias for our second gain stage, and that's really kind of the most important one, um, where the, a lot of the distortion, you know, we have two cascading gain stages going into one another, and where the second one is biased is really going to be uh, determining kind of uh, a lot of what's going on in the circuit. So this 8.2K is really important. I like to change this out with a pot and make it a variable resistor. Um, and there are kind of two two ways that I will often approach it. Um, the first would be to have a 4.7K uh, resistor that is going to be wired in series with a 10K pot. Um, and you're going to wire that pot as a variable resistor. Uh, sorry, that drawing is not very good, but um, what that's going to do is it's going to set a minimum level of resistance of 4.7K, which is about half. Um, and uh, that's important because then you have the 10K pot to give you a travel of voltage. And at about minimum, of if you set the 10K pot to minimum, you have this 4.7K of resistance, and that is going to give you more of like a starved fuzz where the notes are kind of sputtering and kind of zipping and they're not really sustaining. Kind of an interesting tone. Um, and if you have that minimum resistor, it's really easy to find that spot. Um, and then if you, on the flip side, if you put the 10K pot at about medium, then you have, you know, five, about 5K, add that to the 4.7, you're about 9K, so that's pretty much in the ballpark of where you'd want to be to get that, what it would be kind of optimal. Um, you know, the, the more optimal voltages, kind of in that 4.5 volts to 5 volts range. And so, um, if you can, uh, you can pretty easily find the optimal but if this is a linear 10k pot, you can pretty easily about noon or about 11 o'clock find uh, the optimal voltage. But then you also have a little bit of... Uh, if you go to the opposite end, the high end of the 10K pot, uh, then you have about 15K of resistance, which is going to increase the bias voltage and kind of overload the transistors a little bit. Um, and it's just kind of a, a nice sweep and a nice amount of, of, re of resistance, and it, it really allows you to dial things in. You know, if you ever have temperature variations or, you know, just the fuzz isn't quite sounding right, having a bias pot in series of 10k with in series with that 4.7k resistor really is helpful um, alternatively you could also just do a 20k pot all by itself you would have even more of a of a potential sweep of voltage all the way down to zero um, but i found that a 20k pot is a little bit more difficult to find that optimal 4.5 volt range in the middle just because um it's a little bit hard, you have a little bit more travel, you're covering more ground, so every little, I guess, millimeter that you turn the pot, uh, you're, you're actually doing more and, and covering more ground in terms of your voltage. But, so this is my favorite method. Um, so uh, transistor is number one. Number two is adding a bias pot, which I would do on every fuzz face. Um, and then uh, the, the next thing that I want to talk about are these uh, two capacitors. Uh, we've got this guy right here and this guy right here. Those two capacitors are definitely the most important um, capacitors in the circuit in terms of doing tone shaping. Now, a fuzz face, it doesn't have any sort of tone control, so you're really left to the mercy of these values and what they do. Um, 
And so uh, playing with these with these values can really help to t to kind of tame and control the fuzz face. And uh, I I I have kind of two approaches that I want to use. Um, first, I want to understand kind of what they do. So this lists a five UF input capacitor. I would say that is a very high value. Um, if you uh, if you decrease that value uh, down to let's say one UF or even below that, like a 0.1, um, that is going to uh, cut your base and increase mid-range. So if you take this value down to like a one UF, you're going to have increased mids. And uh, it's just going to help tighten up the low end, cut some bass, increase the mid-range, and uh, really kind of change the, the tone and the feel of the fuzz. And if you have ever struggled with your fuzz feeling like it's getting lost in the mix and it's just kind of this wall of distortion, you disappear, decreasing the input capacitor can really help to tighten that up and help you cut through a mix really nicely. Um, now, what I like to do... And, and then I guess also let me cover this output capacitor before I get into the next step. The output capacitor is, is the inverse, right? So um, you can increase this value from 0.01, you can increase it to like a 0.047 or a 0.1 to increase base on the output stage. So, um, you know, if you increase this value, you increase base. It's, it's really kind of you know the same it, you know with this one as well if you if you increase this number to a high number like 2.2 3.3 or 5 uh, you really get a lot of bass in the circuit okay so now let's talk about getting a little creative um, I really enjoy having some different switching options with these types of capacitors. So uh, you can use two different ways. One would be to use like a single pole double throw switch or a double pole double throw switch to switch between two different types of capacitors. Um, so uh, how I have it wired is uh, I actually have the input coming in and going to the switch. So this is going to be our single pole double throw switch, right? And it has three terminals. There's one, and I'm going to put there's a uh, one down here, and there's one up here. So so it has three terminals. And what this switch does is the signal comes in, and then if the switch is in the up position, it goes connects this middle to the top. If it's in the down position, it connects the middle to the bottom. And so um, from here, I would connect. A capacitor. I believe 2.2 is the stock fuzz face value. Uh, so that's kind of more of your higher value, kind of a bassier type of a tone. And then you would kind of connect this guy right here. And then up here, I might do something like a 0.1 and connect that there. Um, so that uh, you know, they're they're both connected at the output point, but you're only changing the route of the input of the circuit. Um, so that's a pretty effective way with an easy switch, easy to wire. Uh, alternatively, you could also do the same thing with a pot. If you just replaced this switch with a pot. You know, and if you think about it, a pot also has three terminals. And so you would just wire these three terminals just the same way. Um, you know, your input would go to the middle wiper of the pot and then the two outside terminals, one would go to one capacitor and one would go to the other capacitor. And that would actually allow you to blend between the two caps instead of a either or. You can kind of, uh, you still have either or at the extreme ends of the pot, but you also have kind of a ability to blend. And with these two capacitors, the input cap and the output cap, I would just highly recommend some experimentation, possibly with a breadboard, 
Um, it really just kind of comes down to giving yourself some options. Uh, I particularly really like the output cap, um, but the output cap as well is, is a really nice place to experiment with some different things and uh, yeah, it just can be really an effective way of getting the fuzz to to kind of have some more EQ options, be a little bit more versatile, uh, but you still have the stock circuit available so it's not like you're taking away anything. Um, you know, th these are pretty simple things in a single pull double throw switch and a couple of caps or two switches is really not a big investment. So a pretty easy mod to pull off and a lot of payoff. Um, then the last thing I want to talk about is this guy right here. This 100, this listed as a 100K pot on the stock fuzz face, it's a 500K. And uh, the 100K is the mod. And uh, I like doing that. It's, it's just kind of a simple mod. Uh, the 500K is um, a little bit darker and a little bit bassier. The 100K will allow more highs to pass through and kind of help the fuzz to open up and breathe a little bit more, not get quite as congested. And um, so overall, it's a pretty nice mod. But So anyways, that kind of covers the range of the circuit, kind of a basic overview of what's going on. You know, again, experimenting with the different capacitors, I'm sorry, the different transistors is a really important deal. Uh, but from there, you can really fine-tune things with, you know, getting this bias uh, pot installed here instead of this 8.2K resistor is a really nice choice. Experimenting with this cap and with this cap, maybe putting them on a switch or on a blend pot is a really great choice as well. And then, you know, changing this, the value of this pot to 100K. You know, with those mods, you end up with a very versatile fuzz where you can cover a lot of ground and uh, really get something that suits your needs. So, if you guys enjoyed this, please let me know your thoughts down below. If you have any requests or anything you'd circuits you'd like me to take a look at or things um, similar to this, please let me know and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.